Good evening, guys. Hope you're well. We're not far away now from the, um, you know, the real business end um, of um, Q School event two. Um, Monday is the sort of judgment day for that event, um, and the outrights are going really well. Um, in the first section, um, I put up Rod Lawler at ten to one, and Daniel Womersley at forties. They are both through to the fourth round and they face each other tomorrow. A um, bit more on that uh, tie later. Um, so you know, that, that's that's a section that's going well. I mean, one of those two are guaranteed to be uh, playing on Monday, two matches away from winning the um, um, you know a, a tour card. Um, section two, um, we've got Leah, um, we've got Hamad Meyer, um, who I put up at ten to one. And he came through well against um, Brian Ochoisky earlier. He's in a nice little section. He's got Paul Davison next to play um, Julian Leclerc or Mark Lloyd. And um, yeah, he, he's um, he's one you know I really liked at the start, and um, he's going good. Um, third section, both of them are still alive. Um, Robbie McGuigan, I put up at thirty threes. He's now. Sort of around the seven to one mark, um, scoring really, really well. Um, yeah, he's he's in a very, very sort of winnable section. Um, yeah, and again, more on him a bit later. Um, Leo Fernandez, I put up at eighteens. Um, he's a bit shorter now, um, especially now that Bai Lang Ning came out. He plays his conqueror Sid Wilson next. Uh, so big game for Leo. Um, so those two are still on track to face each other. Um, and section four, both my two came through earlier. Michael Giorgio um, and Mitchell Mann. Both, um, yeah, both could could meet in the final round. Um, Mann's got quite a tricky tie tomorrow against Dylan Emery. Giorgio's got um, an ex-pro, Brandon Sargent. So, uh, yeah, not easy games for either of those two, but um, both playing uh, particularly well. Um, so, yeah, all the outrights, bar one, I think Matthias Baranowski is the only one that came out. So seven still alive and kicking, which is, um, you know, good to see. Um, move on to tomorrow. Um, I'm going to put up, well, I'm going to put up a, a strong double. Um Quite a big price uh, that I quite like, and then two sort of sort of faintly overpriced players. Um, I'm going to start with those um, those two first. Um, one of them is actually Daniel Womersley. Um, he's obviously playing Rod Lawler. Um, he's a seven to four shot tomorrow. Now uh, I think that is a he's a touch of value. He's um, he's playing particularly well. Um, the worry is he's playing um, Rod Lawler, who you know he's so difficult to sort of um, play against because he's such a dour player, and he'll try and drag um, quite a fluent player in Womersley down. But Bet three six five goes seven to four on Womersley. I don't think that's bad value. Um, Lawler's two to five. He was about eight to thirteen today against Chen Falong. I don't think there's a lot between. Chen Falong and Daniel Womersley. So um I think overall I'd probably prefer Lawler. Um he's in that section with uh, Michael White, who's playing Barry Pinches now. Uh, White came through um earlier, struggled four three against Ben Forty from um, Hereford Way. Um I, uh, I mean Michael White sort of going off 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 the peak at the moment. Um Michael White will be a big favourite for this section. I mean, he was like thirteen to eight this morning. I think it's way too short. And I think Pinches could be the sort of type, you know, the older experienced player that um could give Michael White problems. And if you know if he does get past Pinches then it could be Rod Lawler, could be Daniel Womersley. I'd probably rather it was Lawler. I think, you know, Lawler is real granite at this level. Um but I think at the same time I think Womersley's got a, a you know a real sniff against him. The other one that I quite like the look of, a little bit overpriced, is um, Mark Lloyd, 
He's um, 12 to 5 to beat Julien Leclerc from Belgium. Now, Mark Lloyd um, played Leclerc in the first event in uh, Q score. He actually lost 4 1, but there was a lot of it was a lot of close frames in that match. Um, Lloyd won 4-1 um, earlier against Patrick Whelan, not did a couple of 60s. Um, he's quite a handy player, he's Lloyd. Um, he's um, he's the current um, English under-21 champion. He's um, finished number one in the rankings um, on the sort of um, under-21 development tour. So, um, yeah, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a decent player. Um, the clerk will do well to sort of beat him two times in a, in a, you know in two events. Um, I think that should be a little bit a little bit shorter than twelve to five on Mark Lloyd. I do, I do like him. Um, you know he, he pushed Peter Lines very close in the World Championship in um, in April in the qualifiers. He lost six five. Um, so he, he he's useful and um, yeah, twelve to five is um, a bit of value. On to my two sort of main picks. Um, my outside, my outsider tomorrow is a guy um, who I put up against the other day. Um, if you remember rightly, um, it's Brian Seney. He beat. Um, I put up Raymond Fry to beat him. Um, Seney actually won two frames on the black and one on the pink, so it was a really close match. Even though he did win four nil, but I think that shows the improvement in Brian Seney. I remember putting him up about a couple of years ago in Q score, and he was about one hundred and seventy five to one, and I liked what I looked. What I liked, what I like, um, I like the look of him. Sorry, um, at that time, um, he's very, very quick around the table, and uh, he's sort of a bit like his um, Maltese um, uh, compatriot Tony Drago, if you remember him. Um, brilliant around the table, fast, fluent, and I feel like seeing he's, he has to say, he's 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 getting more experience, improving. Uh, maybe a couple of years ago, he might have lost those you know, really close frames by his sort of naivety. Um, he's playing James Cahill, who I've you know I feel you know a lot of people probably think I'm I'm, I'm dead against him all the time. Um, I do think he's a classy player, but um, I do feel that the bookies over um, you know overhype him a little bit, and you can get eleven to four on Brian Sini in that match. Um, Today he won four two against uh, my good friend um, Jamie Curtis Barrett. I messaged Jamie earlier and he said he was he played very very well from two two. Uh, Cini, um, and he just said he's he's you know he's a he's a dangerous player, um, and I think he's he's worth a little go at eleven to four um, to um, upset James Cahill. Um, my main fancy tomorrow <coughs> is actually a double. It pays five to six on Bet three six five. Um, the first one is the guy who I've put up in um, in the section in section three, Robbie McGuigan. He's um, a one to seven shot against a lad from Latvia. I think his last name's um, Verlages. Um, I've watched him on YouTube. Didn't rate him at all. Um, he struggled against players I, I don't rate at all um, in Q score. Um, Robbie McGuigan. Scoring really well. Um, he beat Kishan Harani 4-1 the other day. That's a cracking win because Kishan Harani can score and he's decent at this level. Um, sort of going off peak a little bit. Um, I forgot to mention this in my in my preview, but this is how much I sort of rate McGuigan. I mean, he's so talented. Um, in the Northern Ireland uh, Amateur Championship final last year, he played a guy called Declan Lavery in the final and he lost 10-9. In that final, uh, McGuigan knocked in three centuries and three big sums. I think they were, well, it was 130, 120, and something like 105. So um, he's he's lethal in the balls. Um, I really do fancy him, you know, in this section. I think it's opened up nicely for him. Um, I think Ian Burns has come out of it. So, yeah, he's 1-7 to seven tomorrow. I mean, it's, I mean, I think he could easily be sort of 1-10, to 1-12 to 12 in this. Um, I think he's a class apart. And in the double, I'm going to put in um, Ross Muir, who I don't think there's anyone in this whole competition that's playing better than him. Um, in He's played, obviously, in the event one. He lost um, to Sid Wilson 4-3. In the whole of the tournament so far, he's played six matches. He's had 17 breaks over 50. And he's had three centuries, and he's had three 90-plus uh, breaks. Um, three, he's three. He's had... Two of the three centuries, he's had 132 and 140 
140 was today and the 132 is in the first event. So he's absolutely flying at the moment. He's playing a guy called Simon Bedford who's been around the block for years. Um, he got to the Crucible, I think, in the 90s. Um, you know, he's, he's a decent yardstick, but um, Muir is playing so, so well and his confidence must be through the roof. Um, Bedford beat um, Ross Bullman today. He beat Daniel Wells in the round before, which was a really good win, but um, Wells is um, really down on confidence, I feel. Um, and it was a good win over Bullman, but he's going to have to up his game against um, a player of um, Ross Muir, who's, who's in great form. Um, I actually feel that Muir could easily be a one to two shot here, but he's eight to 13 with bet 365. And as I say, if you combine the two, you get five to six with him and McGuigan. I personally think that double should be around about um, four to seven, eight to 13 shot. So I think five to six is, um, is really good value. That'll be uh, that for um, tomorrow's games. Um, good luck if you're having a play and um, fingers crossed I'll be back for um, the final day tips for uh, Monday tomorrow. All the best. Have a good uh, good day tomorrow. Take care. Bye.